thoughts of human uh, mankind. And Cain, he was uh, uh, a tiller of the ground, but Abel was uh, 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 the keeper uh, of the sheep. Okay? And, and so I want you to understand this because uh, uh, something dramatic happens. And we often see families. See, the devil hates families. The yeah, devil hates yeah. institutions. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. devil hates marriage. Yeah. Mm. He yeah. tries to destroy marriage. He tries to destroy family. Preach yeah. apostle. He wants to divide them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because he was once in a family. Yeah. Uh, and he was kicked out of heaven. So, so, so he, he tries to go about destroying family because he knows where there's unity, there is strength. Yeah. Yeah. He tries to divide family. Yeah. Mm. He tried to divide Adam and Eve, Lord have mercy. And he was, he was able to be successful in that he seduced both of them. But God, thanks be to God, they, they stayed together. Yeah. The man didn't leave uh, his wife. The woman didn't leave her husband. Hallelujah. Each one began to take responsibility for what I did, before what I said, what what what, what I my consequence. Uh, I realized, Adam, uh, if I hadn't brought the uh, the the. the the, if I hadn't have brought the fruit to you, that, that you, I, I wouldn't have damaged our relationship. Yeah. No, honey, I, I realized I made a mistake as well. Yeah. It takes two in a marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody yeah. tell the Lord thank you. Yeah. I'm a prophet too. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Thank you. I'm prophesying right now. Preach a prophet. But it takes two. It takes it's easy for us to blame one yeah, and not take two. responsibility for the other. But it takes two. Yes, it does. It takes two. Lord, I thank you right now. We want to stop right, stop right there. Okay, so so one was, so in the course of time, Cain and Abel, they're taught by their parents to, to honor God, to respect God. And one way that they would honor God and respect God, they bring the firstling. They bring an offering to him. Uh-oh. And they bring him an offering of their vocation. One is a tiller of the ground, and that's Cain, and the other one keeps sheep, and that's Abel. So Abel brings his offering, and Cain brings his offering, and they set it before the Lord and said, this is yours. And God has respect unto Abel's offering, meaning that God accepted Abel's offering, but he rejects Cain's offering. And many theologians say, well, uh, I think that they, God respected King, I mean, Abel's offering because they were sheep and the other one was grain. God doesn't care what offering you bring. He just wants you to bring a Thanksgiving offering. A Thanksgiving offering. Praise the Lord. He wants you to give from your heart. Amen. It's not about how much. Uh-oh. It's about, are you grateful? Are you thankful? Yeah, okay. I, I brought it to you. I gave it to you. I allowed you to, to, to the, I blessed the ground. I was able to keep your, the, the wolves away from the sheep. Uh, God wants you to be grateful and thankful. Uh-oh. The purpose of offering, he said, God wants you to know that uh, if he was hungry, he wouldn't last you. Uh-oh. But he wants to know that you're thankful. He wants to know that you're grateful. And Cain was not grateful. Uh, so his offering was not accepted. Uh, no doubt that he began to think about saying, well, why is God requiring this to me? I, I can use this for myself, for my family. But yet Abel understood Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. Cain then gets angry. He's angry with God, and he takes it out on his brother. Uh-oh. He's in the field with his brother, and then he's so angry. Uh, why did you have to show me up? 
Why did you have to put me on the spot? Why did you do this over the top? You brought these gifts, you brought these offerings, and now God is upset with me. The devil looks at a weak vessel and he tries to seduce them. He tries to, to manipulate him. He tries to talk to him. Tell him all kinds of evil things about family members. Help the Holy Ghost. God wants you to understand to the pure, all things are pure. But to the defiled, things are defiled. God spoke to Cain. He said, if you do well, it's accepted. If you don't do well, sin lies at the door. You know, we hate to be reproved. We hate to be rebuked. We hate to be corrected. But sometimes we need to be corrected. Lord, have mercy. I, uh, I, I got a grandson uh, and I work with them uh, because they want to be good in basketball. Uh, they like the sport, uh, uh, but they don't like to be corrected. Uh, they don't like to be put on the spot. Uh, they don't like to, uh, uh, for someone to tell them uh, that's not the way to do it. Uh, you got to do it a better way. children we try to correct them and then sometimes they get mad. Yeah. God was speaking to Adam and Eve, I mean speaking to Cain and he got mad. He didn't he didn't approve. He didn't approve of God rebuking him. And he got angry and got to angry to the point that that, that he said, well uh, if I get my brother out the way then I don't have to worry about this anymore. So he kills his brother. Lord have mercy. He kills his brother and then God curses him. God tells him you're going to become a fugitive and a vagabond. Fugitive is someone who runs away from the truth. They run away from consequences. They don't want to take the consequence. So they'd rather run away. They don't want to take the sentence. Yeah. They don't want to take the, the, the judgment. Yeah. So they run away. And, and then, so he becomes a, a, a fugitive, a vagabond. is almost like a homeless person. You're going from house to house, place to place. Uh-oh. Mm. We got vagabonds, church vagabonds. Mm. Lord have mercy. Go from church to church. No certain home. You ought to have at least one place you read you're willing to, to settle down at. Yes. Amen. Right. The Lord came, then he 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 says, God, you, you're putting too much on me. God puts a mark on him. And he tells him, I don't want anybody to to, to lay a hand on Cain. Now you know that at this time we're not talking about people that live to 100 years old. You're talking about people that lived hundreds of years into their 900 year, into their uh, uh, close to uh, eight or 900 years. And in the midst of this, then they multiply. Remember God said, be fruitful and multiply. So you're talking about a multitude of people so both male and female, Cain then leaves, but he has this mark on him. He's getting, that, that God's saying that nobody, for no reason, is to kill Cain. He's got to live with his consequences. Uh-oh. Cain then leaves and goes to a land called Nod, which is east of Eden. And there he settled down, he meets a woman, and there he uh, marries her, and he has a child. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. King then uh, has a child, and he calls the child Enoch. Lord, I love you today. What I'm 
what I want to say to you is that uh, don't leave God. In, in the midst of whatever happened, Cain was to take responsibility for his actions. Sometimes when we make a mistake, we got to realize that we made the mistake. We made the error. We got to accept the responsibility, accept the consequence. Amen. Lord, no matter what it is, if Cain had just accepted the consequence, God told him that he was going to curse the land, that no matter what he did, the land wouldn't give back its fruit. But I'm telling you, God will have mercy on whom we have mercy. And God is a forgiving God. He is a merciful God. Look at here now. I imagine as a father, Adam was telling Cain, don't leave. I know what you did. How you slayed your brother. How you killed your brother. But don't leave from the presence of God. God is a merciful God. Let me tell you, that old serpent came and he tricked your mother and I. But God still had mercy. We were supposed to die right then and there. But God had mercy. If you would just fall down on your knees and say, Lord, have mercy.
time to go into all the particulars, praise the Lord, but he had children. And his children's children had children. And the children's children had children. And uh, so so Cain had Enoch, and Enoch had Arad, and Arad had Methuselah. And Methuselah had Lamech. Help me, Holy Ghost. You know, in the beginning, God created man and woman, and he said man ought to leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife. At that time, it was one wife. Uh -oh. When you leave God, you get your own religion. Huh? So at that time, when he had Lamech, Lamech decided he won't have two wives. That's where it started at. You can go into the text, you can read the text, Nobody else had two wives until Lamech. Somebody, uh, uh, Enoch didn't have two. Ired didn't have two. Methuselah didn't have two. Two. Methuselah didn't have two. But Lamech, he decided he won't have two wives. So that's fleshly. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. See, he had his own religion. That's what the consequence of the father. The father don't live right. Children don't live right. Say it again. Ouch. Ouch. We got to live right. Praise the Lord. If we live right, it's helping our children. We make good decisions, it's helping our children. You make bad decisions, it's hurting your children. Yes, amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. Now, it doesn't mean that you're perfect, but when any man sin, he have an advocate, advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Huh? We all want to sin. Everybody got quiet when I said that. Ain't none of us perfect. Amen. I'm not perfect. And God knows I know you ain't perfect. We all got to overcome something. Yes. Some got to overcome more than others. Yes. But we all got to overcome something. Yes. When my wife said she preached the other Sunday, you got six months to mind your own business, six months to leave you. You someone else alone. We all dealing with something. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's why we all need prayer. So he had two wives. And so he not only had two wives, but he also committed murder. And he said, you heard about Cain and what he did, and the consequence and curse on him was seven times. He said, to me, it ought to be 70 times seven. I don't know if he killed his wife. Don't know who he killed, but he killed somebody. Somebody told her, thank you. When you don't live right, there are consequences. Yes, it is. Uh oh. On the reverse side, there came uh, 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 brother Abel was gone, and now they don't have any lineage. Adam and Eve knew each other again, and they had a son. That's why. Don't give up. God don't want us to give up. It's not designed for us to lose. God is going to always prepare a way of escape. Ah, Lord have mercy. God had a design, and his design was perfect worship. And Adam and Eve had a son, another one. And his name was Seth. And Seth had another son. And his son was Enoch. And Enoch, ah, uh, then the Bible says men begin to call on the name of the Lord. Now, I don't know if Adam and Eve uh, uh, said we went wrong with Cain. Uh, 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 
I don't know if they went to God and said, God, give us another son. Uh, we promise you we'll bring him up in your admonition. Uh, oh, we'll, uh, what the Bible says, train up a child in the way they should go. Uh, uh, I don't know about you, uh, 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 but raising children is not easy. Uh, somebody say, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I often tell the Lord, Isaiah, uh, I wish I could do it all over again because I made mistakes. Somebody said, I'm going to testify just a little bit. I was a little bit too abusive. I wouldn't call it a little bit. Somebody said, I believe in corporal punishment because that's the way I was brought up. Lord have mercy. Ah, uh, but sometimes when you're a young parent, uh, you don't know when it should end uh, and when it should begin. Uh, you're not the best at discerning uh, between how much uh, and how little. Uh, and sometimes uh, you bring home the pressures of this life uh, and you place it on your children. Uh, I'm just preaching a little while. Can I tell you? I felt like preaching. Uh, somebody said, yeah. To my children, uh, when they were in the eighteen, I sat them down. Uh, I said, "Please forgive me." Uh, somebody said, "Yeah, uh, forgive me of my wrong, uh, and my errors." Uh, I, I realize uh, I made mistakes. Uh, somebody said, "Yeah." Uh, so don't raise your children uh, like I raised you. They can get the message. Yes, yes. Somebody tell her, oh, thank you. Thank you. I had a friend of mine, she was an author, writer, and she wrote this book, Spare the Child. Praise the Lord. It's not a law line into her name is Stacy Patton. And that book really helped me. Sometimes books can help you. Yeah. Somebody tell her, oh, thank you. Talk thank about you. her being brought up by adopted parents and being abused, and sometimes I saw myself in that book. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. Help me hold the ghost. I didn't mean to go this way. Praise the Lord. But the Bible also says, children honor that mother and father, but it says, mother and father, don't provoke your children to wrath. Right? Sometimes mother and fathers can do wrong things. I know that my wife, I consider a perfect parent. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I wasn't perfect. Praise the Lord. But I try to be as perfect a grandparent as I can be. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Thank you. I'm still not there yet. Tell them you help somebody. Huh? Yeah, I still amazing. wish I could do it over again. Yeah, Praise the Lord. But Sometimes you can't do it over again. All the time you can't. Once something is done, it's done. It's in the past. But what you can do is be remorseful, correct it, and move forward. Share what you've learned with others. You can't undo the past. Yeah. No, you can't. Now, unlike the science fiction movies that you see, there is no going back into the past. Are you listening to me? There is no reverse flash. There is no going back in time. Yes. Cain can't go back in time. Can't go back but what he time. could do is learn from his mistakes. 
repent. Say you're sorry. You did it. Did nobody else do it but you? Whatever consequence you got to deal with, deal with it. God will deliver. It's not designed for you to lose. It's designed for you to learn, man. It's designed for you to win. God understands that we're not perfect. He understands we're going to make mistakes. Now look at here that uh, uh, Seth has a child. Child's name is Enoch, and then God, men begin to call on, they begin to worship. So you got one side of the family who is heathen, the other side are worshipers. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. And as they begin to populate, you have Canaan, and then you got Mahuzulah and Jared. Some of these names sound exactly the same. And then you have Enoch who walk with God. So it lets you know that, that whatever Adam and Eve would teach himself, he taught his lineage. And it went down to a place where they had men and women of God produced. People who loved the Lord. People who cared about God. People who worship God. People who thank God. People who brought offerings. People who praised. God. Somebody say yeah. yeah. It's a good thing to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. I heard the songwriter said somebody needs to catch on fire. Yeah. On one hand you have people who rejected God. Lamech has Noah. 
Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Thank you. And Noah has Sam, Ham, and Jephat. Praise the Lord. And they populate the earth. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. After the flood. Hallelujah. With every temptation, God's going to prepare a way of escape. You're not going to be in a situation where you lose. It's not designed for you to lose. No matter what you go to. No matter what mistakes you make. No matter what errors that you have. Just fall down on your knees. And say, Lord, have mercy. Forgive me. And God said, I'll forgive you of your every sin. Block them out. Cast them into the sea of forgiveness. Uh, this word of mercy and redemption is real. Now, there is a council culture where people want to counsel other people. I know I'm not saying that right. I got that little twang in my southern voice. Um, but people want to they, they want to mark people out. They want to say you're no good. And you're discarded and you're done with. But God is not like that. He still needs a merciful church. There's one part of I love the entire or it's prayer, but there's one particular one that I have an affinity to. Forgive me of my trespasses as I forgive those that have trespassed against me. Lord have mercy. Forgive me of my debts as I forgive my debtors. Praise the Lord. We have to have mercy in us. Look, God can't forgive if we don't forgive. Do you get what I'm talking about? It's in God's plan. It's in his will, but he's really judging us on our hearts. When people are not in church, we ought to have compassion for them. Uh-oh. Oftentimes I hear my Senior pastor, she'll call up and say, what's going on with so-and-so? Give me the number, I'm gonna call them. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. You gotta realize that we all go through things. Praise the Lord. And we all are going to have moments that we're in the valley. You ain't gonna always be on the mountaintop. Are you listening to me? There's going to be some valleys that you won't go through. We have to have compassion on people. I guarantee you God would have had compassion on It hurt God that a brother killed another brother. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Now, this is crazy. I know we jump into another thing. They had the squeegee boys. You hear about what happened where this man uh, got out of his car with a bat. He was upset for whatever reason. And I don't know, I wasn't there. Somebody tell him thank you. And uh, allegedly, he approaches the squeegee boys and squeegee boys of the young men that are on the courts here in Baltimore who solicit funds from washing the windows. And he gets out and he approaches the squeegee boys. And I don't know exactly what happened, but allegedly it was threatening and one of the squeegee boys Allegedly, I don't want to get sued. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Pulls out the gun and shoots it. He dies. All the world today.
Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. So what I'm saying is that in we can't vilify people. The Bible tells us it lets us know that he is the judge. He's the ultimate judge. Judge not that he not be judged. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. I know you got your own opinions, but I see this in, in a light praise the Lord that is of compassion. And I have compassion for the family that lost the young man. He was a Hopkins graduate, a father. It's a terrible scenario. Thank you, Jesus. And I solicit you all to pray about this. Pray about this situation. But I do understand that one person's mistake doesn't vilify everyone. And that one person's mistake doesn't mean that they're not sorry. They don't have compassion. They don't, they, sometimes they, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh -oh. Not saying that they don't deserve consequences. We all deserve consequences for what we do. But we don't deserve everyone's consequences. We don't deserve to necessarily be vilified. I'm telling you that God is a compassionate God. He's a merciful God. And I want our church to be compassionate. I want our church to be merciful. What are you talking about? That, that you don't know who's going to walk through those doors. They're not always going to look with a, a, a suit on or a, a dress on. Uh -oh. They're not always going to have neat hairstyles. They're not going to necessarily have money. Some of them are going to be running from this place or that place. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Thank you. Uh, but they need a church that, that, that would not look down on a man. Uh -oh. They need somebody that will pray with them. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, restore, restore. rebuild, renew, revive. Why? That's what was happening to you. Didn't it happen to you? Yeah. I came to the church. My pastor said, restore, yeah. renew, yeah. revive. He said, young man, you ain't gonna never be the same. That was over 40 years ago. Look at me now. Yeah. Somebody tell her what thank you. I was as low as you could get. I was as low as you could get. I was in a place of disillusionment. I was being manipulated by Satan. The devil wanted to destroy me. I shouldn't be here today. Should have died a long time ago. But God had mercy. So I'm ready to say, He chose me. He chose me.